In today's video, we are going to be studying types of problems known as related rates problems. A related rates problem is essentially a problem in which we are given two or more quantities and how these quantities and their rates of change are related. And we are asked to define either one of the quantities or one of the rates of change given other values. So in this video, we're going to only be looking at examples. We will look at several related rates problems. For our first example, let's consider a spherical balloon being filled with air at a constant rate of 2 cubic centimeters per second. We are asked to determine how fast the radius is increasing when the radius is at 3 centimeters. So the first thing is try to visualize the problem if necessary. All right, let's say there's our sphere, or say this is our spherical balloon. There's the center. We know it has a radius r. Now we want to write down what we know. What is known is that the volume is changing, so that's dv dt, and it is increasing at a rate of 2 cubic centimeters per second. What we wish to find is the quantity dr dt when the radius is at 3 centimeters. So the first thing we need is an equation. The equation is going to be volume of a sphere, which you should recall to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Then this will give dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. All right, remember, we're doing derivative with respect to time. So we have to do chain rule on every variable. Well, since we wish to find dr dt, we can solve for it by dividing by 4 pi r squared. Thus, 1 over 4 pi r squared times dv dt is equal to dr dt. But we also know that dv dt is 2. So dr dt is 1 over 2 pi r squared. We can now go ahead and answer the question, which was how quickly is the radius changing when it is 3 centimeters? So we want dr dt evaluated when r is equal to 3. This gives us 1 over 2 pi times 9, which is 1 over 18 pi. And the units are centimeters per second. Next, we look at a very classic example known as the sliding ladder problem. Right, in this iteration, we are told that a 5 meter ladder leans against the wall. The bottom of the ladder is initially 1.5 meters from the wall and slides from the wall at a rate of 0.8 meters per second. We are asked to find the velocity of the top of the ladder after one second. So again, let's try and draw out this problem. We'll say this represents the wall here. That's the ground. And we'll say here is our five meter ladder. We will call this distance y. Right, so that's the distance the top of the ladder is off the ground. 
we'll call this distance here x. So that is the distance that the base of the ladder is away from the wall. Now, write down what we know. We know that initially the base of the ladder is located one and a half meters away from the wall. So x of zero is one and a half meters. We also know that dx dt is 0.8 meters per second. We wish to find velocity of the top of the ladder after one second. So we want dy dt when t is equal to 1. The equation that we're using is Pythagorean theorem, which says x squared plus y squared is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. So we get 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt is equal to 0. We wish to solve for dy dt. Subtract by the 2x dx dt, then divide by 2y. We get negative x over y dx dt. If we wish before that, we know that dx dt is a constant 0.8. This is negative 0.8 times x over y. So if we want dy dt after one second, we'd have negative x of 1 over y of 1 times that 0 0.8. I don't know why I didn't write that out in front. I'm going to rewrite it negative 0 0.8 times x of 1 over y of 1. We don't know either x of 1 or y of 1. But we can find it. We can find each one. x of 1. Well, it would be the initial plus velocity times the number of seconds that have passed. Right, we said initially it's one and a half meters. So after one second, we find that the ladder is now 2.3 meters away from the base of the wall. We can now use Pythagorean theorem, the equation, to say, oh, well then, y of 1 would be the positive square root of 25 minus x of 1. And the reason we keep it positive is because y is measuring height off the ground. If it was negative, it'd be below the ground, which is not possible. And this, I'm sorry, should be squared. So it should be x of, one, x of 1 squared. So this is the square root of 25 minus 2.3 squared. And keep to one decimal place. This gives us 4.4 .4 meters. So the velocity of the top of the ladder is equal to negative 0.8 times 2.3 over 4.4, .4, and that is negative 1.1 meter per second. What this is saying is that the ladder is sliding down the wall at a velocity of 1.1 meters per second. For our next example, consider water draining from the bottom of a cone-shaped funnel at the rate of 0.03 cubic feet per second. The height of the funnel is 2 feet. The radius at the top of the funnel is 1 foot. 
At what rate is the height of the water in the funnel changing when the height of the water is half a foot? All right, so let's draw our cone. Like that. Since it's a funnel, it's going to kind of go like that, right? And then this would be the opening of the funnel. All right, we're told it's going to have a radius of one foot, right? So let's go ahead and draw an imaginary vertical axis up the middle. Right, then this distance right here is the one foot. This distance here is the height, that's two feet. Now let's say this is where the water is currently located. Right, well then this distance here, we'll call H, right? So that's the height of the water. And when it's at that height, it's going to have a radius, call it R. So what do we know? We note the volume is decreasing at a rate of 0.03 cubic feet, so dv dt, negative 0.03 cubic feet per second. We want to find how quickly the height of the water is changing when it's at a half a foot. The volume of a cone given by one third pi r squared h. Well, this is a problem. Notice that this is in terms of two variables that are changing with respect to time, radius and height. We can't have that. But if we look at the figure, right? Wouldn't this be one triangle here? And then we can draw a second triangle like so. These two triangles are similar. So by the rule of similar triangles, we have to have the, the, the ratio of base to height, R to H, equal. So R to H would have to equal 1 to 2, solving H in terms of R, um, R in terms of H, rather, sorry. We get R is equal to H over 2. If we plug this back in, we will get volume is 1 12th pi H cubed. This gives dV dt as a 12th, I'm sorry, not a 12th a fourth pi h squared dh dt, meaning that dh dt is 4 over pi h squared times dv dt, which is negative 0 0.12 over pi 
h squared, right? Because dv dt was negative 0.03. Now just plug in h equals half a foot. And we get negative 0 0.48 over pi feet per second. As a final example, let's suppose that a company that manufactures flash drives Cost and revenue equations are given where production output in one week is X flash drives. If production is increasing at the rate of 500 flash drives per week, when production is 2,000 flash drives, find the rate of increase in cost, revenue, and profit. So for cost, We have dc dt is equal to 2 dx dt. Right? We wanted dc dt evaluated when x is 2000 and dx dt was 500. We get 2 times 500, so it's $1,000 per week. So cost is increasing at a rate of $1,000 per week. Revenue. DR DT is equal to 10 minus... 0.002x, and all this is times dx dt, right? Because it'd be 10 dx dt minus 0.002x dx dt. So dr dt, when x is 2000 and dx dt is 500. If we plug those values in, we are going to get $3,000 per week. So revenue is increasing at a rate of $3,000 per week. For profit, there are two ways we can go about it. We can find the profit function and then take its derivative and plug in the knowns, or we can recognize that db d, dp dt, when x is 2000 and dx dt is 500, would equal the derivative of cost at those values. I'm sorry, the derivative of revenue at those values minus the derivative of cost at those values. And we already evaluated those, so this is going to be 3,000 minus 1,000. So our profit is increasing at a rate of $2,000 per week. It is left to the viewer to find the profit function first, then take its derivative and plug in the known values. That concludes this video on related rates problems. So when doing a related rates problem, the first thing you should do is draw yourself a picture and label all of the values. Then state what you know 
what you want to find. Generate your equation, then use implicit differentiation, plug in all of your known values, and solve for what you want to find. The next video in this series, we are going to look at the differential as well as linear approximations. So until next time, take care.